Hello everyone and welcome to a new video MC Murah here and in today's video we're gonna talk about how you can manage your drive gauge this is actually a very important element uh, of this game right your proficiency with this is gonna determine if you're a good Street Fighter 6 player or not you have to treat your drive gauge as your health bar sometimes as your stun gauge your OD meter it's everything with it you're very capable without it you're very vulnerable if you got drives you have access to the drive impact whether you like it or not drive rushing you have the parries that negates mix-ups uh, you have the drive reversal that no one uses you have OD moves the world is yours <laughs> and without it you lose access to a lot of abilities now i think a really important element is identifying what your character specifically lose in burnout right and i'm talking like what sort of capabilities do they lose for example i, I will explain what i mean right a character like luke what does luke use drive for from my experience mainly the main usage for Luke uh, with Drive is if he happen to get like a light knuckle combo mid screen. Typically here he he can't get Oki, right? There isn't any real Oki here, uh, so Luke will use the Drive Rush to get Oki on knockdown, right? And even if he use like the heavy knuckle, again this one doesn't give him Oki, and he need to use Drive Rush to have any sort of like offensive pressure, right? And the other main way that Luke get to use his drive is to have easy access to crouching heavy punch, right? Uh, like you do a combo like that, and that obviously give you like the knuckles, and you get the combos. So what I'm talking about here is that Luke loses the combo damage because crouching heavy punch. If you're in burnout, it's actually very hard to get this to land at all. Like even if you happen to get to jump in, a crouching heavy punch like that can whiff. And you're, you will end up doing like much weaker combos and no Oki. His neutral is actually pretty fine in Burnout. Uh, he still got the Fireball, he still got the Uppercut, he still got good pokes. His level 1 super is very good uh, as an option in the neutral and on defense. And he got the Beast Mode baby that he can use. And this super is pretty good because it buys you a lot of time. So he can defend himself once he's in Burnout but he loses on offense. Luke becomes a much weaker offensive character once he's in burnout. So like I said, you want to avoid it as much as possible. A lot of this game comes down to how can I use my meter most efficiently and how I can attack my opponent most efficiently. For example, one thing we all know here is if the opponent is blocking, they get to lose their drive right if you happen to get them blocking if they got punish counter they lose drive and if they have uh like if i hit them with an ex meter or an L super level 3 super uh, they get to lose meter as well so let's set up a situation where you would want to use your entirety of your drive gauge right i uh, hear for example jury is at 40 percent health i happen to get the jump in right here you know what i will use it if it's gonna kill you know what use your drive doesn't matter i will have it back as the next round anyways that is great but if jury have like like 60 or 70 percent then yeah this combo i just did <laughs> this becomes awful because now she can drive in back me she have still have the party if i get knocked down my options becomes much more limited this sucks <laughs> don't do that right a better option would be you know what i'm gonna use a combo like a three bar combo even like a four bar combo right this is not bad and then maybe i will use that and cash out a level three here and that will regain me some drive so it would be something like this right i actually messed it up This is a very weird combo <laughs> but here for example i cashed on my level three and my level three will get me like a one and a half bar back so that's not too bad and then i got like to thread the throw and take a look at that i'm almost at three bars back that's fine that's that is like in this situation that is a better option right now another thing that is very important in this game what people mostly use drive for is drive rush right 
Now, one thing I see people do all the time, and I think it's pretty bad, is this. Like, for example, in a sequence like that, you have used like four drive bars because you want to check low and then you cancel into another one. Four bars just to get us through mid screen. And even if I want to capitalize on this one, I have to use another drive rush. I mean, that sucks, <laughs> right? Now, in the other way, I can show you like a really good sequence with Yuri. Right? You see the sequence, what Yuri just did? Here, Yuri spent like what? Like 10% of her drive rush? And Luke actually lost like two bars for blocking that. Right? And you know what? She didn't hit me. I didn't get hit. I didn't get thrown. But I lost so much drive. This put Yuri in such a good position. Now, let us show you what happens, for example, uh, like what happens if she did the same sequence and I did parry. Right? Obviously, here I didn't lose any drive. So that is bad for Yuri. But if she did the same sequence and then decided to throw, for example, you know what? I got punished countered. She lost half a stock and I lost one, right? And obviously, I lost a lot of health. She did like a 20% throw. So you have to think efficiently about how you would want to use your drive. Uh, the, the two worst ways I have seen people use drive is spend like a complete unnecessary amount of EX fireballs in the neutral because that kind of stinks and overextending a lot and I mean a lot on like drive rush cancels and then you get throws especially mid screen this is not really that good I know you all want to have your plus frames and to press the opponents <laughs> but trust me this is an awful 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 usage you really don't want to do it that way, right? Now, another thing that is very important in this game is also knowing how, how to punish the opponent in a way that is beneficial. Um, for example, all right, so now Honda is going to do his butt slam and we will try to get the perfect parry on him, right? I've seen people, when you get this punish, I've seen people actually spend like crazy amount of meter on drive gauge like drive gauge cancel i've seen people do stuff like that and i'm like what is the point right like you didn't do any damage you put yourself in burnout or put yourself closer to <laughs> it's not really important uh, what you want to do in a situation like that is either attack his drive or go for the corner pressure like for example for example if i do a combo like a heavy bunch into a drive impact right two hits Honda here lost almost two bars of drive. Take a look at this. Honda lost almost two bars of drive. I lost one, sure, but he, now he lost two. So the drive economy is in my favor. Or in the same situation, maybe go for like the corner carry. Right? Something like this, that's not that bad. And uh, you have traded the drive for uh, the corner carry and you got yourself in a pretty good position. Doesn't do that much in terms of uh, like drive economy, but it puts you in a good positioning in the match, right? So when you get the perfect parries, I need to either go for positioning or go for the punish on your opponent drive. Don't overextend with drive rush cancels that will cost you a lot and the end result is not worth it in my opinion. Now another thing that you kind of have to be aware of in this game is the gravity of being punished countered, especially on the DI interaction, right? And especially if the opponent got level 3. Actually, you know what? Let's put Luke at like 20% or 30%? 20%. So I got as a critical art, right? Kami try to DI because she's kind of greedy. I will get the combo. Let's wrap this up, right? Now let's take a look at how much meter Kami lost. Remember, Kami started at six stocks. And I get like a guaranteed heavy bunch into Sam Blaster here, right? So take a look at this. Kami started at six gauges. 
and now she only got one left and it's kind of easy actually to deplete that one because the meter economy now is completely in look side i made her block that fireball i can then go for like some sequences here to ship her drive now she's kind of in burnout but you know what i got the stun and you know how it goes right <laughs> so you kind of have to avoid that i will say from my experience me personally i try as much as possible to not di once i'm in round three round one round two maybe di but if the opponent got a critical art or a level three you know what i will play honest footsies honest to god footsies i'm not gonna try to di the risk reward here is so skewed against you now I mean, obviously, if you overload the opponent, if you got mixed them up good, then maybe you can DI, but I hate using it in these specific scenarios, right? <laughs> like, like this one is very common. Kami got me in the wall, and bam. I mean, that kind of starts the whole um, steamroll element, right? Kami can actually lose the round simply because of that interaction, right? And that is about it, honestly. Uh, be smart with your drive gauge, know what your character can do, which characters especially you don't want to be in burnout against. I will say being in burnout, for example, against JP, that's brutal. Being in burnout against Marisa, that is brutal. <laughs> if you don't have like a level one super and a burnout against Marisa, you can actually be guaranteed to be KO'd. Marisa can actually checkmate you at full health if she does a level 3 super or like the critical art and you don't have reversal and you don't have drive to DI her back, that can be GG's. So, gotta be careful. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It helps the channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon, Discord, Twitter, and Twitch pages in the description. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.